Good afternoon. You're watching Straight Talk uh, with Cito Beltran, except I'm Cher Calvin filling in for him today. And uh, the, our guest today is someone that's known as a pop diva who transforms music and songs into lean, energetic sensuality. She started off with Ensalada, then she went to music and magic, and then she went solo. And guess what? She rarely gives interviews. We're talking with Kula Desma today. Hi, Ku. How are you? Hi, Jim. Nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. Um, well, you know, we. I, I said that you rarely give interviews. Why is that? Why do you rarely like to give interviews? Is, is it that is true? There, I don't know. That's Maybe what they said. Maybe a long time ago. Maybe not a long anymore. Time ago. Yeah, you know, as long as uh, uh, I have something to say. <laughs> okay. But I wouldn't just, just do it, you know, because uh, you know somebody wants to interview. If there's really nothing interesting for me to say, I try not to do it. You know, okay. Nothing right. going on in my life. But now there's a lot of things happening in my life. And you know? what's happening in your life now? Uh, I, my life has totally changed, you know. Uh, my activities are different now. And right now I have a very exciting show with Jaja Padilla at the PICC. Really very exciting. Yesterday I heard all the arrangements. And Louis Ocampo is just really wonderful, you know. It brought me to tears, really. The arrangements were so beautiful. How is it doing doing a show with another, another, um, you know, excellent singer like Jaja? I mean, you're used to doing things on your own, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. now you're singing with someone else. How is that? Actually, this is the fourth female singer that I'm doing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a show like this. Uh, the, the, the first three shows that I did, which was entitled Power of Two, mm -hmm. is more or less the same concept where we do a lot of duets together you know, very little solo numbers. But uh, it's always very exciting to work with, you know, one of the best, no? And you started with Ensalada. What was that like? I mean, is that, was it always your dream to be a singer? No. No? No. I, I loved to sing as a, as a child, you know, when there were, my mother would have parties. She would always bring me along and, you know, I was the, uh, how would you say that? Parang entertainment <laughs> <laughs> break. But, uh, uh, it, it never occurred to me that I was going to, you know, be a singer by, by career, you know. How did it all start then? Uh, actually, by accident. Mm -hmm. But when I was in college, I was saying, wow, just give me a stage. You know, I'm singing and singing. I said, how am I going to do this? You know, I love to sing. And um, finally, you know, when I was after college, after a rural practice as a nurse, actually, because it was a... Uh, uh, prerequisite, you know, before you professionally practice nursing, that you have to go to the rural areas, mm -hmm. you know, to to give your services. And uh, after that was just saying, you know, I'm not going to be a nurse. I think I'll just go to Holy Spirit, study art or, or something like that. And one lazy afternoon, you know, Jet Montilibano of Ensalada then, who became also a member of the Music and Magic, mm -hmm. uh, wrote me a letter that there was a girl who was going to leave the group if I wanted to audition. Hmm. So actually, that was the first time I, you know, I stepped foot on a hotel because for five years I was in Bacolod, you know, and I never really went out or, you know, stuff like and that. And that was where you were from, Bacolod? Well, I studied nursing there. My parents are uh, Ilongos, mm -hmm. but I, I grew up in Manila. Did you find that you, were you, were you had like these uh, singing entertainment things at parties that your mom would let you do and, and things like that, but did she ever um, ask you to say, okay, listen, you know, this is going to be your career. There are singers out there that, you know, whose mothers make them wake up at six o'clock in the morning and start singing, you know, things like that. Did that ever uh, happen to you? Well, my mother was never the kind of a uh, stage mother, but she was always the, an encourager, you know, she would always say, kaya mo yan, you know, but never to a point where parang finifuersa or hindi, yan na yon, you know. <laughs> uh, no, actually, she, she encouraged me more to be a nurse, mm. you know. And uh, when I became an, uh, a member of the Ensalada, just before she uh, lived in the States, she, she, she moved to the States, she saw uh, a show of mine in the band and she wasn't... Uh, she wasn't actually pleased with what we were wearing because they were all sexy, you know, slinky, stuff like that, and er, uh, you know. It's, very conservative. Whatever, yeah. Was, was, your, was your family life very conservative Not, growing up? Well, we wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we were the type that uh, was very conservative, but not, you know, a kind of, I didn't have a kind of mother who would just, mm -hmm. you know, n not care about, you know, Mm -hmm, of yeah, the social affairs of our child. You know? Well, you've also found um, found uh, a new a new thing in your life, and that's your your Christianity, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that a little bit? I mean, it's it's changed your life mm -hmm. dramatically, so much, right? Yes, very much so. Um, well, 
my life is so different now. I used to think in the beginning when I was a young Christian, as I would say, when you were just when I was just starting. Um, you know, I'd say, ah, I'm too busy. I don't think I can go to Bible classes, you know. And sometimes I would miss uh, Sunday services and mm -hmm. all that. But, you know, as I became, and something happened again, a serious thing happened again in my life. And I guess it was a way of, for God telling me, you better make me number one in your life or this thing's going to keep repeating, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, when that painful experience happened again, I really decided, okay, Lord, the, you know, I'm going to take you seriously. You're going to be number one in my life. Mm -hmm. And I realized that when you, uh, you know, uh, do the things for God and, and you make Him, uh, you know, your first love, then He is the one who really arranges everything in your life. Mm -hmm. Things fall into place. All of a sudden, you know, you have more peace, mm -hmm. you're, you have less trouble, so you're able to go to the Bible classes and things just happen, you know. I mean, I'm not saying that it's a perfect life. Right. Because there will always be trials and all that. But uh, now, whether I have this show that I'm, you know, I'm uh, very excited about, and, and usually you can't bother me with anything, you right. know. I go to Bible classes, two on every Tuesday, and uh, sometimes, you know, people would come and ask me if they can sit with me, what happened, you know, and, and, and I can counsel them and all that. I would still put that in because that is number one in my life. Do you talk about, I mean, I've, I've read also about you that you're very private with your life. Mm -hmm. But when people come up to you in Bible class and, and ask you how come you're, you've changed and, and how come you've uh, dedicated your life to God, mm -hmm. do you tell them uh, things about your personal life or the reason definitely, why? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people said uh, of me that I was uh, uh, very mysterious. You mm. know? Yes, because I, I didn't think that it, it was important for people to know about you know all the details of your life. I don't think mm -hmm. that people should know all. No, but um, you know, being a Christian now, you know, and you are called a servant of the Lord, that that takes a different perspective in mm -hmm. one's life. And so, you know, there will always be things that are very private that I don't think you need to, sure, you know, to, to, to share with everyone. But there are a lot of painful things that I share with people because these are things that I feel uh, I don't want them, you know, to experience, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the mistakes that I went through. So I explained to them these, these were my mistakes. I think maybe this might be your mistakes too, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I, I go to cell groups and we exchange, you know, uh, and share ideas and revelations mm -hmm. as, we, as we call it from God. Because you, we know when you read the Bible, as the Lord speaks to you through His words, there are many things that He reveals to you. Mm -hmm. So there are people who, who say, oh, but I've read the Bible, you know, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, love story, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yes, it is the love letter of the Lord to us, mm -hmm. but uh, there are many things that uh, people need to understand that when they read the Bible, mm -hmm. It is different when there is an anointing that comes, mm -hmm. you know, and the anointing comes when you lead a holy life, when you lead uh, a life as much as possible without sin, sure. you know, or without accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior first, because mm -hmm. that is what the Bible says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we are still separated from God. So we can be reading them and we can just be looking at words. Mm -hmm. And it's just in the surface, you know, there is really no depth in mm -hmm. your understanding because the Holy Spirit is still not within you. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's, you know, it sounds very complicated and so, what is she on, you right. know? <laughs> a lot of people... does, does, do you feel that a lot of people get turned off uh, by, oh, yeah. by this? Oh, I yes. mean, because oh, yes. some people out there, you know, don't, don't want to hear about it, you know? No, I no, mean, even don't. though we're a Catholic country. Oh yes. You know, and yeah. I mean, especially being in showbiz. Yeah. How does that? How does that? Does it hurt your your oh, your no, showbiz no, ever? No. I don't think no, so either. No, 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 no. Because you know, when you understand the, the kind of God that we have, it is really Him that provides you know uh, work, the blessings to His children. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, there's just so much wisdom that I have learned, and I will mm -hmm. never ever exchange or go back. To my old life. What was what was it about your old life that um, you didn't you don't want to go back to? Well, you know, I thought that I, you know, uh, being with my grandfather because he had a lot of wisdom. I thought, you know, he uh, he shared with me the wisdom, and I, you know, had it, you know, and I thought, oh, I'm pretty smart, you know, I can, <laughs> you know, I'm tough and this and that. I'm a street kid. I, I grew up in the streets and all that. But you know what? 
Um, the wisdom of God is the perfect wisdom. You know, you cannot say Confucius, Confucius right. had wisdom, okay? Mm -hmm. The wisdom that comes from God is the wisdom. And until we open this book, mm -hmm. we really don't have much wisdom because we, we mix, you know, uh, the knowledge of the world mm -hmm. with some of the wisdom that we hear in church, okay. you know, when we go, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. But um, this kind of a wisdom is so different. I mean, now when you talk to people, you know, you know, there is a discernment when they're fooling you or when they're, you know, saying something foolish, you right, know, right. or very worldly and all that. So you're able to, uh, you know, the, the, as I said, the anointing is there. Well, know? that's good. I'm very happy for you Thank that you've, you. you know, found this new part of your life. Mm -hmm. um, you're still, I mean, you're still in showbiz. You've got a concert coming up. Yep. Um, you're very excited about it. Uh, you know, I, I know that you also did some movies. Do you ever plan uh, on very doing? Movies, <laughs> you did like three or four, um, yeah. like this one over here, Ora Plata Mata. <laughs> yeah. Years yeah, of that, living dangerously. That one I'd like to forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is is that something that you would like to go back to? I mean, do would I, you do a movie now? Well, you know, Ora Plata Mata was a, uh, you know. Um, uh, Peke Galiaga directed that, and and he called me one day and said, "Cool, uh, you know, I, I really need you to help me with this uh, project because if I'm not going to be able to get you, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Amy Marcos. But if she says no, you gotta say yes to this, you know." And then, of course, you know, I love this guy dearly, you know. Mm -hmm. Hello, Peke, uh -huh. and and he goes. Uh, but I have to blow your head off, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> what? How are you going to do that? But you know, I was young and all that. Yes, I've changed my mind back. If you asked me now, I wouldn't have done that. But, but anyway, you know, uh, it was very, very funny because, you know, I had to do this, how do you call that? The, the mask thing uh -huh. and all that. And when the guy blew the thing, there was this like brain thing that came off and, and Mitch Valdez was uh -huh. part of the movie and he, she was going, okay, you know, cover yourselves, it might go to us. And true enough, it went to Mitch Valdez. <laughs> it right. was like, you know, <laughs> following her. I could only imagine. Well, we have so much more to talk about here on Straight Talk with Kula Desma. We're going to take a break. We also have phone numbers that you can call in and ask her any questions that you'd like and, you know, just feel free to ask Ku anything you want. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, huh? Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm here with Kula Desma. And, uh, you know, Ku, you, I remember when I first arrived here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. right, seeing this beautiful billboard of you in a beach somewhere, right? And oh, it said, yeah. Ku, right? It said something like that, right? It just had your name, Coo I precious. think. Precious. It was something from an like album that. I did in the States, yeah. Yeah, and, and then there was, there was also a billboard um, in LA, Yata, yeah, and in San, San, Francisco, San Francisco or something like no, that. No, Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. You have a lot of fans in, in the West Coast, in the States. Uh, that you also did a lot of concerts there, right? Yes, I always uh, uh, do a tour, mm -hmm. if not once a year, once every two years. Mm -hmm. It's really a, a fun thing for me to do, you know. Uh, to be away from Manila again and be able to also sort of do a research, you know, uh, in music, uh, the, the fashion mm -hmm. and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, America. very good. And so you like to go there once a year oh, yeah, at least. Yeah. You bring your family with you usually? Or? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Your daughter also sings, right? Yes, Isabella sings. Uh, she is now, you know, hopefully going to start her album. Very, she's very talented. We, I was very lucky to um, interview her and <laughs> yeah. she even plays the guitar and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, do you think that it's, uh, I mean, as a, as a mother, just as a mother and, and a, with a talented daughter, do you feel that you're, you pressure and then as a, as a concert woman that, you know, sings and famous for singing, yeah. does, does, do you think that she feels pressure from you? Yeah, in the beginning, okay. she'd tell me, now, Mommy, you would pressure me to sing and look at that, that, you know. There she is. That's <laughs> Isabella right there. How old is she there? She's a lot older now, no? Oh, yeah, she's 18. She's 18 already. Yeah, she was like 10 there. And I can't believe that she was doing all of that before, but, but she was really, you know, very enthusiastic about singing, mm -hmm. you know. It's like when she was six years old and, and we would have guests in the house in L.A., she would say, well, you want me to sing for you, you know. But she had this one song, 
you know, there is a castle on a cloud, you know, from uh, Le, Le Miserable. Mm, okay. She would sing that all the time, so, you know. And you also have a recording studio in your house? Yes. Is that yeah. true? Yes. And that so is, do you, uh, does she use it? Do you use it? How often do you use it? What do you do with it? <laughs> when I do, a, uh, you know, when I'm doing a record, right, like right now, I'm doing a an inspirational album mm -hmm. so what's that gonna be there. like what are your inspirational album because I, I was gonna ask you that because a lot of people would of course want to know when you're gonna be coming out with yeah. something new <laughs> well I am I'm really hoping that I can finish it before Christmas because it will be a nice Christmas gift you know and a lot of people are already pressuring me come on finish it finish it I, I need a Christmas gift for my friend right. and all that. so uh, I'm quite excited about it. Um, the title of the album is Walking on Water. Mm -hmm. It's inspired by uh, Peter, who, uh, when he focused on Jesus, when Jesus was walking on water, mm -hmm. and he saw him, he, 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 as long as he was, you know, looking at Jesus and not the waves and the storm and all right. that, when he was in the boat, he got out of the boat and he walked on wa water. Right. As soon as he, he, you know, felt the waves and uh, the, the wind and all that, he started sinking in water. Right, right. So th I feel that that's the kind of life I'm leading now, mm -hmm. that I am walking on water because my focus is just, you know, Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you also do free concerts for, for uh, is that true, that you do free concerts sometimes? Once in a while, yeah, mm -hmm. when, when there is a uh, worthwhile cause mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, when there are times when I, they ask me to do my testimony mm -hmm. and all that. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, and uh, I know that you're also a perfectionist. True or false? Mm. They say that you're a perfectionist. I, I you know, I, I hope that's good, you know, because I think it's a way that uh, you really do everything to give your best to mm -hmm. the people. And that's what I always want to do for, for my shows. Mm -hmm. And, and has it changed your worth ethic being uh, no no, no. I, I, I still work very hard you know if mm -hmm. I if I don't work hard on something I might as well drop it I might as well not do it okay you also ventured into the restaurant business yes, before yes. Um, and I would see you there I would Republic always go of Malate. <laughs> I was such a fan of Republic of Malate I, I really love that place it's I'm, I'm sad that it's gone do you, are you do you have any plans of getting back into that business or, or are you or not really? We're, we're re rebuilding right now, but uh, Republic of Malat is going to uh, take a different turn. It, it's going to be a bigger theater, and it's uh, mainly for uh, live concerts and plays. Mm -hmm. It's a very cozy 550-seater place. It's bigger. And uh, on the second floor, there's going to be special boutiques, you mm. know, of about 20, 20 stores. Okay. And uh, like a survival cafe again. Oh, I like that place. And uh, <laughs> a bigger, you know, lanai. You know, remember before that we would have this, like, terrasa, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like a very airy sort of place. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to see that. It's we have some questions. Look at this. Okay. What is your favorite song and why? My favorite yes, song? Yes, from Le uh, Leo of Basai. It changes from time to time. <laughs> uh -huh. Right now, I'm so in love with that song, uh, Walking on Water. Okay. That's the new one that's coming out on your album. Yes. Okay. Uh, Pauline of uh, Quezon City says, are you really um, a nurse? From what <laughs> school did you graduate? Did you actually finish your nursing? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, it was five years. Sometimes nursing is only got four years. Mm -hmm. no? uh, but I took a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and that's five years. I can actually teach. Um, <laughs> and I took the board exam, and I passed it. <laughs> so if I need any help, I could ask you. At least your daughter, I mean, you know, your kids can, your kid uh, could uh, yeah, ask yeah. for help when she gets, like, falls or something <laughs> like that, right? You know what of to course. do. Um, Darwin of Makati, I find Ku very beautiful. I just want to ask you. if she joined any beauty contests. <laughs> That's a funny question. Because he did, right? <laughs> well, uh, but it's a very funny uh, story because uh, when I was in nursing, uh, our dean said, oh, you have to represent the nursing. You know how they you know, have different uh, uh, colleges in, in one university, right? Sure. So we, I was in the College of Nursing, and she said, okay, you are going to join the beauty contest. You're going to represent the College of Nursing. And I said, no, I, I, I really don't like to do things like that. I'm going to be a ba in a bathing suit or something. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, I, I wanted to die. She said, no, you are going to do it. And I, and I said, Lord, I want to get sick, you know. I hope I get sick. Right. And true enough, I got sick. I had really severe tonsillitis. So you never entered? 
No, no, no. I, I think I, you know. That was the only one. You never, you never got. <laughs> Come on, there had it's to be just one. Just not my thing. <laughs> not your thing. <laughs> Helen of Kesson City says, "Good luck, South. Uh, your upcoming concert." And she wants to know what kind of perfume you use. <laughs> Chanel, okay. Cristal. Okay. Um, Anna of uh, Mandaluyong, your daughter looks like Hilary Swank. Oh, Have really? you heard that before? Her? Uh, okay. Well, she looks like, you know, ten, 10 women, I think, that way. Okay, from Bacolod, Beth. Um, why is it that you're not doing concerts here in Bacolod? Is it true that you don't want to come back to ah, Bacolod? No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. We may be doing a uh, pre-Valentine concert in Bacolod. We may just, or right after. Okay. Hopefully, uh, Jaja and I will be able to bring Diva to Diva there. Okay, excellent. Um, Zenny of Makati wants to know what song would best describe Kula Desma? What's the best song right now? It's Walking on Water. I want to hear it. Can you give us a little bit of it? Ah. It's hard to sing it without uh, music. <laughs> I am wa walking on water. I'm walking by faith. Though I know not where I'm going, I will follow and obey. I will lean not on my own understanding, but upon the one whose voice can calm the winds. I am trusting in Jesus, I'm trusting my Lord. He is my Savior, He is my all. For if not by His grace and His mercy, I would have never made it through the storm. Ayon. Wow. Oh, that was really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Without music, huh? <laughs> She's like, oh, no music. Uh, you, that difficult. was a cinch for you. Are you kidding? All right. Orlia Pasek, what is the biggest challenge you've encountered in your life? The biggest challenge? challenge. Uh, well, it's always challenging on a daily basis, on a moment by moment, to struggle with sin, you know, because we all have our weaknesses. And I think the biggest challenge that we all have to discover in our life is really how to, to live it for God, how to really serve God. Because when, when we know what it means to serve God, then we will know how to serve, you know, mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you know, our neighbors. And uh, I struggle with that, you know. But um, slowly but surely, you know, God is working in my life. Mm -hmm. And in Romans 8.28, he says, And so we know that in all things, not some things, all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Mm -hmm. So he allows all the painful, f painful situations in our lives to really bring us to a closeness to him you mm -hmm. know because sometimes you know when we're very blessed we're very happy you know we forget him mm -hmm. no and, and i don't think that you should forget him ever right no yeah okay but you were saying something during the break um we were talking earlier about how people some people get turned off it's a catholic country yeah you wanted to say something about that no well you know um i wouldn't say that i i i'm one of those who would have been turned off i think i would have been very polite listened but i had that experience you know Ray Fuentes, mm -hmm. who was way, way ahead of me, who became a born-again Christian a long time ago, like probably 20 years ago mm -hmm. before I did. 15 years ago, he uh, shared with me the gospel of Jesus. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, it went one ear and out the other. I thought I heard it, but they, I don't know. It, it wasn't. People said, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's always in God's time. Mm -hmm. You know, there are just times when people are talking to you about God or Jesus and all that, it's just not going through, you know. Mm -hmm. Our minds are just uh, so, um, how do you say this, in tune with the world mm -hmm. rather than in the spiritual, you know, realm. Okay. Um, Ross uh, of Roja City says, Ku, you are a great singer. I will always be your loyal fan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I hope you can see the show in PICC. It's and that's again really, on really the 30th, exciting. and the 29th and 30th? 29th, 30, yeah. Right, PICC. Okay. Marjorie um, of Cotabato says, Hi, Ku, who Hello. is the most famous person you've ever met? Who is the most? Mm hmm. Um, wow, you know, my, my, uh, one of my favorite singers, uh, when I was just starting at grade two, I, I would mimic her actually, and that was Julie Andrews. I met mm. her in a party in the States, yeah. What I, was that I, like? I really, I met oh, her also when very, I was like nine. very nice person, yeah. I didn't find her nice at all. Really? <laughs> she was so mean to me. <laughs> I was nine years old, oh I was God. in Fire Island, what and, did I, she say? and I, I, I said, Can oh my God. imagine the Mary Poppins girl mean to the kids? She yeah. was terribly mean. She really? didn't want to yeah. give me her autograph. <laughs> 
but that was, you know, Maybe she I thought she wasn't worthy. I, oh, yeah, <laughs> at nine years old. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Dax says, says, Ku, when is your new album coming out? You, we were talking about that. How about a live album and a Tagalog greatest hits album? Um, I'm working on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, uh, Tagal uh, a Tagalog greatest hits? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But, you know, uh, doing an album is always a lot of uh, work for me. Sure. Uh, there are days that I love going into the studio, and that's when I, I really feel like I had enough sleep, nap, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are just days when I feel like, not today, you know. And when you're in the studio, it's so much pressure, you know. It, it, it's really difficult to just keep doing the song over and over. Right. And for me, I don't like doing a song, you know, line by line. You know, there mm -hmm. are artists who do that, and there are producers who make an artist sing line by line. So I have to know the song by heart first before mm -hmm. I go into a studio. And, and sometimes it gets interrupted by a lot of other things like concerts mm -hmm. and you know. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to make an album for you? When I'm in the rhythm already, when I'm there, you know, like, okay, now I'm gonna finish this album, probably a month, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, from, from the conceptualization and all that, sometimes it's a year, two years. Right. Do you, do you write your own music? Do you compose? No, no, but I think I'm very close to doing that, mm -hmm. at least the lyrics. So you, let, you write your own lyrics? Well, no, but, but I conceptualize right. a song, like Walking on Water was right. a, a concept of mine. Excellent. Um, Ku is, a, is truly the only pop queen. This is from Mari Chu of Isabella. Ku is, the, is a truly, is the truly is truly the only I can't say it sorry it's written wrong uh, pop pop diva she's very good and cool singer but she looks more contented and happy now <laughs> are you yeah well, there's so much peace in my life you know so much more understanding of uh, what goes on in, in uh, one's uh, life and uh, I guess it had the spiritual aspect of my life is there right. before it was absent, you know. Okay. Cool, we're going to take a break here on uh, Straight Talk. We're going to be right back. Keep on sending your questions and comments. Welcome back to Straight Talk. We're still here with Kula Desma, and uh, very interesting. You know, I, I really find it interesting that you've made this change in your life, and it's really made an impact, even in, in your music as well. So, are you willing to hear the gospel of Jesus? I, I'm. I, I don't know yet. <laughs> See, that's the thing. No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be the first one to admit. You know, I'm Catholic, and I and I have all these. You know, uh, I have a certain way of, of believing. You know, um, but I, I don't really understand the difference between being Catholic and a born-again born Christian? Don't be offended. Well, I, no, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was Catholic too, and uh, uh, Catholics consider, well, the, you call yourselves uh, I, right. uh, Christians, Christian, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but the thing about um, my life before, because there are Catholics who know Scripture, you sure. know, uh, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Catholics also who don't really right. open their Bibles, right? right. Um, but Christianity is a, it has, um, you know, Christ in the beginning, right? Christ, right. I A N, right? So, mm -hmm. um, without Christ, we are nothing, of you course, know. Right. And and not a lot of people understand that. Not mm -hmm. just Catholics or sure. you know, but um, it is very important that we know Scripture right. because I used to be ignorant about Scripture sure. and how powerful Scripture can be in our lives. Right. You know, we are, we're co are, we are composed of uh, two parts, right? The body and the spirit. Mm -hmm. And our God, our Creator is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So there is something missing, very, very uh, an important uh, part of our life that's missing when we don't understand the spiritual aspect of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to, now I say ignorance is not bliss yeah. and what we don't know will hurt us mm, you know mm. because there will be things painful things that will happen in our lives and it will continue to happen in our lives mm -hmm. for as long as you know we do not understand and we're missing the reasons why you know these painful things are happening in our lives mm -hmm. so God will continue to allow these things until finally you know we say Okay, I surrender. What is it, Lord? You know, tell me, what are you doing in my life? And until we ask that question and we go to Him, He's not going to 
you know, come into our lives. He's just waiting. Eh? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, he's got his hands, hands open, stretched, arm, yeah, mm -hmm. stretched out. Denise of, uh, of Batangas says, Ku, what's the feeling when you judge uh, the Miss Universe 1990 and Miss Philippines? What, what did you feel when you were judging that uh, beauty pageant? Uh, it was a, you know, that was a fun... Uh, Since you weren't into it before, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the bar. Yeah. Um, I had a friend kasi, from LA who, uh, who asked me to do it and he said, you know, these are, you know, believe it or not, these are things that are not really, it's, it's not something that I would say, oh, I want to be a judge of this right, thing and right. that. Really, I mean, you know, there are very little things in life that I will really consider very important in my life. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's a way to make friends and this and that. And it's a good experience, you know. And that really taught me a lot.